My name's Adrian Burgess. I'm from the UK. And I'm here to tell you a story, uh, which is what we did around paternity leave. And it's not just because, it's because I think, if we think about the world, and we think about the different countries now thinking about parental leave, paternity leave, all over the world, including in the US, it's interesting to hear how other countries have done it and what the pitfalls have been, and also the failures. And this is a story, in lots of ways, about failure, but it's about the lessons that we're learning along the way. Now, I want to also reinforce what um, Anne-Marie said, uh, the whole idea that this is a kind of game changer, that, pot, that it may not you know, seem to work out so much with lower income families, but when you, when, you have, when you have policies that are up for debate, it generates column inches. So th this becomes a very visible topic. So involved fatherhood becomes a very visible topic. So it's incredibly useful to have these conversations, um, to have these conversations you know, as you develop the policies. Also wanted to say with regard to low income families, if you have statutory leave, that is to say it's state, it's, it's, the state says you have a right. Yeah, if at the bottom level, at the level where people are earning very little, there is no gender pay gap. Because one of the things that's always been said is that what stops parents sharing is that mum earns more. Well, at the lower levels, mum, uh, uh, dad earns more. At the lower levels, that ain't true. Everybody's badly paid. So one of the barriers is immediately gone. So if you pay your parental leave at a, a reasonably, even at a low rate, but at a reasonably, you know, better than the minimum wage, or even at the minimum wage, you will get more sharing. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through our little story. If I can, yep, there it is. Um, it all began, of course, with maternity leave. It all began with the need for mothers to be able to stay at home, to breastfeed, to get over the birth, and this was a hard-won right, uh, and it was very late in coming in the UK, and it was driven by the trade unions, right? So it came out of labor law. So in the 1970s, what was going on? Well, maternity leave was introduced right across Europe, and of course, we're nested next to Europe in the European Union. And in, in the UK, the first maternity leave legislation came in in 1975. However, it was very circumscribed. You know, what, you know, the women had to have worked for so long for the same employer, and you know, it was pretty difficult. So only for less than 50% of working women uh, were eligible for it. At the same time in Sweden, they already had maternity leave, and now they were introducing cross-gender parental leave. Fathers and mothers could take it. There was no um, reserved leave for dads, what they call the daddy month, which is a sort of what Anna-Maria talked about, the use it or lose it benefit. If, if daddy, if there's a reserved leave for a, for a parent, a mother or a father, and they don't use it, they can't transfer it over to the other parent. And that's truly, truly vital, to have an element of reserved leave. So uh, in Sweden, they didn't at that stage have an element of reserved leave, but they did, they made it open to the sexes. And talking about this whole idea of the, the Super Bowl ad that's coming out, which is going to say, caring makes you strong. Now, what's so interesting about that is, of course, it's built buying into stereotypes. And we don't know, actually, how productive that is in lots of ways. Because on the one hand, it's confirming the old stereotype. I'm very dubious about that. Now, the Swedes, and uh, not in the 70s, but in the, I think, the 80s or the late, early 90s, they used that image at the bottom there. Can you see it? It's, he, was a famous, he was a famous wrestler or something. And they had him, they had him um, holding this baby. The baby has since grown up and is now talking about par parental leave. <laughs> but, uh, but what was interesting was, again, they were trying to deal with that whole idea of masculinity. Um, and I came across a wonderful um, wood carving from the 17th century in France, where, where uh, um, the king, King Henry, I'm terrible, Henri IV, I think, with a son king. He had lots and lots of children. He brought them all up together at the royal palace. Illegitimate, legitimate, he didn't care, right? He had them all there. And there's a wonderful image. It's extraordinary in its time. 
I should have brought it, where you see him holding a baby and looking at this baby. And when you see this, you think you never see men doing this. This is an extraordinary image for a king to be holding the baby. And his leg, he's in a doublet and hose, and the leg is like this, and it's really muscly. <laughs> and what it's saying, of course, is that real men can hold babies. So somebody has analyzed, um, has done in, in, uh, in Sweden, presumably, they've done uh, some studies to see whether this kind of um, advertising, often done through the trade unions, did have an impact. And they don't think it does. So there, there are other ways, they're not sure, they don't think that the public information campaigns themselves uh, changed things. Okay, so in the 1980s, Britain was lagging behind. So we are bad. The country is bad. The European Union, who by then is starting to become powerful and, and integrated, castigates Britain, tells them off. It says, you are the only member state not providing statutory maternity leave. And we, Britain, had blocked the adoption of a draft directive from the European Union setting out minimum standards on parental leave. We were really bad and falling behind the game. In came the Labour government, the left, first left-wing left government for about 12 or 15 years or something in 1997, and they got to it. The trade unions were behind them, and they granted mothers 18 weeks paid leave at 90% pay. Um, Employment Relations Act granted all employees a minimum of three months unpaid parental leave. Now, we have had leave for fathers since then, in the sense that it's three months, or I think it's now four, per parent, per child. Non-transferable. Nobody uses it. They don't use it because, firstly, nobody knows about it. Only the specialists myse like myself are even aware that it exists. It's never spoken of. The government never talks about it. It's not in any, if you look at employee contracts, you never see it. So that's one of the main reasons. It's never taken up, nobody knows. And the second reason is that it's unpaid. <sighs> I used to work on Cosmopolitan magazine. And in 1999, when there was this talk for the first time about paternity leave, they brought out this image. I don't know if you can see it. It's a father breastfeeding a baby. I threw it in because it's a truly ambivalent and wonderful image. On the one hand, it's sort of shocking. But on the other hand, it's really beautiful. And I think that it, it, you know, it's truly beautiful. What they call the, the hairless Adonis, who holds the baby. And we now know that the Akar pygmies, who are the best fathers in the world, they're 47% of the time within arm's reach of their newborns. The Akar, or I think that's how they're pronounced. Anyway, they're the stars of paternal involvement. And they do actually offer their nipples for a suck. It's a very hygienic way, when you're in the middle of the Amazon jungle, of giving the baby something to suck on, if it's not feeding at the time. <laughs> so we move on into 200, 2003. And here we are. Now in 2003, my little organization, the Fatherhood Institute, had begun. And we were in with the government and with all the organizations lobbying for paternity leave to be included in this. And eventually, we got it two weeks at below the minimum wage. Two weeks at below the minimum wage. At the same time, the maternal lobby extended the leave for mothers from 18 weeks to 52 weeks. And my, the team, my team member who was managing all this stuff from our point of view, sat there helplessly and said to the, the meeting at the end, you have done the worst possible thing for women. And they couldn't understand what he was talking about. He said, you want pregnancy discrimination to continue? That's it. You are defining the mothers as the caretakers and the fathers as these tiny helpers. It didn't, they went, oh, you just want rights for men. No, he said, I'm a really, really, I'm a feminist. And this is really bad for women. So what tends to happen when you go into these countries across the world, if we do start to talk about paternity leave across the world in different states here uh, in, in, and, and in the federal uh, arena, is don't let them extend maternity leave. Because once you've got it extended, 
trying to reduce it and make it shared is an almost impossible task. Let us move on. At the time, I remember this, when it was brought in that fathers were to have two weeks paternity leave, two weeks, the Times had a leader. The Times leader column said, men need paternity leave like fish need bicycles. That would never be said now. So much has moved on since 2003. Anyone who said, I mean, the, anyone who said that would be considered ridiculous. So change happens, and you have these forces at the beginning. So what have we been doing over the last 12 years since 2003? Right, we campaigned for a system of shared parental leave where we wanted the father to have his own right to taking it based simply on his employment background, like paternity leave. A dad can get paternity leave. It's a, it's a universal, and it's specific to, what he, to his employment record. If he's, if he's worked for a certain company for a certain length of time, he can get paternity leave and pay. His wife, his partner can be a stay-at-home mum. It doesn't make any difference. It's his entitlement based on his national insurance contributions, based on what he does. Meanwhile, over here, the mothers have got their 52 weeks maternity leave, an individual entitlement. They are entitled to, it, to maternity leave and pay. doesn't matter what their partner has done. The worst, the worst scenario is where you have transferable maternity leave. She owns it, 52 weeks. Ah, I've used 13. Hmm, don't need any more. He can have it. Aha. But only if his, or if his employment record is good too. And what this means is as soon as you have a transferable maternity leave, you're taking into account two people's employment records. And that immediately reduces eligibility. So in our country, if you have that system of transferable maternity leave, under one in three couples is eligible. So it becomes quite a small group. And you get a lot of frustration because you get a lot of couples who think they're going to share it, and then they find they can't. So we asked for an individual entitlement. We wanted the daddy month, the reserved element, the use it or lose it. We wanted the dads to have um, you know, a month that, they could, that if, they lost, if they didn't use it, mum didn't get it. And similarly, you have to, for gender equality, one that the mum would lose if she, if she doesn't use it. And we asked for better pay. We said, at least the minimum wage, please. The mothers, a lot of the mothers' maternity leave is also at below the minimum, minimum wage. So we were asking for it for both. And how did we advocate for it? We said this was to government because they're making the policies. We said, it's what families want, i.e., there are votes in it. Right? Quite good. Good way to talk. We said, it's what families are already doing. We said, look at all the data. The dads are all taking time off, they're saving up their sick leave, they're saving up their, um, their, ho their holidays, they're all sort of trying to have it around the time. You know it's happening. Dads are already doing it. How can we make this work better? And we also said, oh dear, the UK is very bad, it's very old fashioned. We produced a thing called FIFI, our Fairness in Families Index. We pulled in all the data on mother women's empowerment, on father's participation in childcare, and we put it together and we created a table. And the UK came satisfyingly right down towards the bottom. Not as low as the United States, but pretty low. And, that w and we immediately got, as soon as we published that, the minister called us in. It had an impact. We also said the old arguments, more highly qualified women will stay in employment if you destigmatize the mommy track by bringing men into it. And we made those kind of arguments. We also said, now recently we've been saying, because we've got a conservative government who are in there who are terribly worried about marriage. So we said to them, well, the data says that um, coupled relationships are more stable if fathers take leave, which is true. They are. So, and we said child well-being. And we said when fathers don't take leave, there's developmental pro it's correlated with developmental problems in children. It's a, good, it's a nice piece of research, that. So we came out with those kind of statements. 
and it had an effect. We thought, we have a result. We have a win. In 2011, the government produced a paper for consultation called Modern Workplaces, a great title. And they set out a design and architecture for parental leave that was everything that we could have dreamed of. It had a daddy month, but they added that onto the leave so it wasn't seen as being taken away from mums. They, um, they had the sharing starting much earlier, so mum could go off maternity leave and go on to parental leave. It was all wonderful. It was an individual entitlement. It depended on his record whether he could take it. We thought we're home and dry. All this work has paid off. However, it was defeated, not in the House of the Houses of Parliament, but out in consultation, because loads of organizations lobbied against it. Now, business lobbied against it. Business, as you know, lobby against anything. You want to bring in the minimum wage? It's going to ruin us. You want to bring in maternity leave? Oh, we can't possibly stand that. You want to extend maternity? No, we can't do that. We knew that business would. But what happened was that uh, a conglomeration of trade unions, uh, women's rights organizations, family organizations that were mummy people said, no, no, they said, we can't have this. Women must own the leave. And if they want to give a bit of it to their partners, that's your old transferable maternity leave, well, that's fine. But if you give men an individual entitlement, oh my goodness, you'll have employers not giving any, not topping up payments to mothers because they'll have to do it for both sexes, so mothers are going to lose out. And they said, and we'll also have these men who, who want to look after their children forcing the mothers back to work. So they, they said this. this can be. So what actually happened was the government, who had put forward a wonderful system, in the end, compromised. And what we have is a system of transferable maternity leave. So that, I think, is the end of my story. <sighs> no individual retirement, no reserved leave, and the payment rate remains below the minimum wage. But we have one thing that I think is important and is a message for any other system. One of the problems with the Nordic countries is that they normally allow their parental leave to be shared and individual entitlement, all those good things, up to the, to the um, child being, I think, just about eight, just before. It's a long period, or five, I think, but I think it's eight in some countries. So that, you, you know, it's for raising children in the early years. What they don't do is to concentrate on the first year. And it's in the first year that the patterns of caring are set. It's in the first year. If the women have taken a whole year out of the workforce and then they have a second chance to take another, good, goodbye. That's goodbye to your career. What you want is the men and women sharing. Probably the women will in, you know, take mo most of them, their months early on. But what you want is the men taking the same amount of leave out in the first year. And that has not happened in the Nordic countries. They weren't on the game. They didn't realize when they set up their systems. So that is the one thing we do have, is that all this, poor as it is, has to happen in the first year. Thank you very much. <coughs>